Hello there. This is Bar Paskin, Ohio. I have a new mic tonight, so I'm hoping my sound quality is a lot better. Um, I consider myself a pretty mouthy loud person, but <laughs> these videos have been pretty quiet. So I'm hoping this is a lot better and you can hear me really well now. I'm going to paint tonight on an 8x10 linen panel. This is actually one of my favorite surfaces to paint on. It's a Belgian linen panel from Dick Blick. Um, I'm going to paint this photograph. This is a photo I uh, was given permission to paint. It was taken down in Shaker Village in Kentucky. I follow their site on Facebook and they really do some sweet photography on there. I was going to show you, I actually didn't do anything to this photo. It's about approximately the right size for my 8x10, but I was going to just show you a couple things that I would do if I needed, say I was going to paint it square for example, and I know there's lots of ways to do this. I am pretty low tech, but this is how I do it. I put edit and then the cropping thing, and then, you know, if I needed to change the shape of it, I pull that in. I, years ago when I started painting, I would go through photos and I would pretty much paint the photo as it was. And you learn, of course, a lot as you move along. You know, if you want to change the composition and uh, get your focal point in one of the areas where you're, like when you do th two lines vertical and two horizontal where those lines intersect here, 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 here. That's ideally where your focal point should be. So something to think about, you know, when you're cropping a photo, maybe the cat's head, you want it right there, you know, whatever. You're going to do a square canvas, maybe you want to zoom in on the head. This is one of the things I use. Um, again, I know there's lots of ways to do this. If I was going to, another thing you can do to help you is to actually draw those lines on your canvas. Measure it into thirds each way. When you put your finger on this, you get the grid. And you can look at that and draw in your photo like you want, which I think is really helpful. So we'll cancel that out, discard the changes. You know, again, that's approximately right. I may have to bring adjust it a little bit to fit the 8x10. And we'll set it there. You can't see it too well, can you? I could back out a little bit. Well, we'll just see how it goes. Um, as always, we'll put a tone on the canvas before we start. So give me some feedback and let me know if my sound is better to you. I did do a test with it and it seemed a lot better. Might be annoyingly loud now. You have to turn me down. Better to do that, right? Try not to paint my iPad. Everything I own has paint on it. There's a funny saying about an artist has two wardrobes, one that has paint on it and one will that and one that will have paint on it. I have a friend that was painting out one time and uh, doing plein air and she was heading for her car and the lady stopped her on her way to the car and um, thought she was a homeless person. <laughs> Offered her some clothes and uh, Look like a bag lady, I guess. Pretty funny, isn't it? Well, when it's cold, <laughs> you know, I don't know about other people, but I have lots of layers on. Eh, hopefully I've got everything within grabbing distance here. <clears throat> I think I mentioned it before. Um, 
I use uh, water mixable oils. I know I have mentioned that. And I use a limited palette, generally two blues, two yellows, two reds, and a white. Um, I do like transparent red oxide. I have that on there. And Indian yellow I put out there sometimes. Um, I would prefer this photo actually to have some sunlight on it, which it does not. You know, the dramatic lighting, I would really prefer that. But we're going to see how this goes. Um, when you paint a black animal, black animals, I do a lot of animals and black animals are the most challenging, especially solid black animals. Um, you have to try to find ways to explain their their body with warms and cools and stay still with the darker values. It can really be tricky. Um, again, if this cat was sunlit, it would be better. But um, see, I already got paint on my iPad there. And I did convert him to black and white to see look at values before I started, which is another helpful tool. And there's not a lot. I mean, hit the, the back up there is a little lighter, a little bit of, let me lower it a little bit, maybe. Well, we'll try that and see how it goes. Got to explain these feet. This is the foot underneath coming at you. The other one is and the little heels just overlapping it and that's the other leg so hopefully that won't be confusing so let's try to sketch him on once we do that I may actually um, wipe out that window sill that's really light all right and I am not I'm just winging this so I'm looking at the negative space under the window down, okay? And I look over here where it hits. Hits about there, runs off the canvas. Kind of look at the height. And look at where this crossbar is, fairly high. Again, this may not be the exact crop for an eight by 10, so. We are going to make it work, though. And it's kind of unusual because he's laying on the outside of the window, not inside. I've never been to Shaker Village. It's a pretty cool place. I have an artist friend that lives near there, and he gets to paint there often. I'm jealous. Okay, see I've already made a boo-boo. This was supposed to be the outside edge of the window. So that would be it. We will get it right though. I will not be painting all of those. <laughs> Got a few new subscribers. I want to thank you and welcome you and uh, ask that you please like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, do have a website if you'd like to check that out. Barbara, B-A-R-B-A-R-A, -A -A, PASK, P-A-S-K dot com. You can see more of my work there. All right, let's do this kitty. He's the focal point. He's the most important part of this. This will all be brick down in here. All right, so we've got this. Like I said, I do a lot of pet commissions, and uh, it's the eyes are the main thing. This little guy's got his eyes closed, but the eyes are such a big deal. And when I sketch it on, 
you know, I'd do my best to make sure I got them in the right place. And if you have to, you wipe them off. And you wipe them off every, over and over and over until you get them right. There's a couple of, it's a advertisement, but those are a couple of my paintings of pets. But the eyes are it, you know. And I love it when I get a good photo and I get to crop in on that little face and do the eyes. But like I say, you've got to be willing to just wipe them off over and over. All right, let's see what we can do here. And he luckily is not a solid black kitty. When you've got blocks of color, it really helps to sketch them. See, this is dark here. Got a little white band around his neck. A little sweet white face. Little paw there. Aren't cats just the most laid back animal? I heard him called one time connoisseurs of comfort. Well, that's the truth. They know how to relax. Okay, and then his butt's got to end right there. So see, I'm already feeling like he needs to come over because his tail is right here in the nook of this window. His little foot's hanging down there. That's his tail, that's his foot. Another foot there. Yeah, he's got to come over. Wipe some of this off there. All right, that's his foot, that's his tail. There's a block of white there, and here's another dark foot right there. And then there's a block of white right here. And then see his body. I'm looking at the space that I can see right here on his stomach from this white mark over. See, it did not work to start with his head. I'd have ran his butt off the end. That wouldn't have worked. Yeah, they were so gracious to let me when they posted this, I thought, how cute is that? And they were really sweet to let me paint it. Tomorrow I'm painting outside, going to um, Lebanon, Ohio. That's a town about a half hour from me. It's a historic town, it has a Golden Lamb Hotel. A lot of presidents have stayed there throughout the years, and we'll be painting outside there around the Golden Lamb someplace. I'll be looking for a shady spot. It's supposed to be 90 tomorrow. That's the hard thing about outside. You know, sometimes you're not always painting exactly what you want because the, you know, the light dictates for me, this, I have to be out of the sun, and that dictates where I'm going to be a lot of times. But even if you don't get something you love, I figure it's great practice. I joke about that. I've probably said that before. If something turns out, I, I meant to do that. If it doesn't, it, it was just practice. Hard to tell what I got going at this point in it. Hopefully this will be a cute painting. We'll see. Kind of blocking in the darker area, just lightly.
think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dampen my cloth a little bit and I'm going to go in and, and wipe out the whites. For me, this is water. If you're doing traditional oils, it would be solvent, obviously. Better to go a little big. And then that pole is like right in that area. Okay, cross. Everything is subject to change. You start out with a plan and uh, Go ahead and wipe out some of this molding too. And then I'm going to look where this thing is running through his head. It's right about there. So obviously this one should hit midway between those two. All right. We got to start here. I've been trying to do these videos in one taping for several reasons. The ones that I've done, you know, in even two recordings, I find that people tend to only watch the first one. I don't want to say, I mean, a lot of them watch both, but they'll watch the first one. Um, and I am new to this and I don't really edit. <laughs> I record and put it on and you get what you get at this point. Maybe I'll get better at it later. I do have iMovie, of course, and I did figure out how to link two videos together in that, but then they were too large to download to YouTube. So, all right, so let's uh, mix up a really dark dark, some ultramarine, some transparent red oxide, and I even squirted out a little black this time, um, which I would use never by itself, but mixed into other stuff. I say never, but I have stuck it in the pupil of a pet's eye. I really prefer the hard panels. Like I said, this is a linen panel, which is really nice. Um, with the stretch canvas, I always feel like I'm trying to work it into the canvas. Probably part of that's because I don't use a medium. If I have to, I use a little water. Yeah, I, like I said, wouldn't you have loved to have seen this in sunlight? It sure probably would be a better image. See that little white stripe's got to come up a little bit. I can see that. Around his little paw.
These are Cobras. I may mention that. I ordered them through Dick Blick. There are quality water mixable oils. And I think that makes a difference because some people try them and don't like them. And I think that's a lot of it. Sometimes they just, the quality isn't there. So, okay. That's the shoulder there. So we're going to have to go a little lighter in value to explain that shoulder. be tricky explaining these back legs. We'll do our best. Leave your website in my comments if you've got a website and I'll check you out. Wake up. The last video I put out talking about supplies and stuff. I'm sorry the sound was so bad. But please ask me any questions you might have. You see a little bottom of his foot there. A little bit of black down there past the tail. Okay. What we're going to do is, I think I'm going to take this dark mixture, I may put a little cobalt blue in it, a little white. This is all just trying out things, see how they look. Okay. his little elbow there. Going Saturday to uh, Waynesville, Ohio, which is another really cute town just a little further past Lebanon, going to paint in a plein air competition. I did it last year and I won and I sold my painting, so <laughs> great day. Didn't get any better than that. and crimson in it. Let's get a little rosier and see how that looks. It's a little difficult to see everything in this photo. He's dark and the window behind him is dark. Let's zoom in on him a little bit. So you can see, let me crank it down for you. You can see the lightest part of him is on his back and around the elbow. Kind of explains the shape of him. A little lighter there on the bottom of his leg.
back and here on his hip is lighter. I'm looking at what I got going here. That's that stomach area. Heel, I guess. His little foot. to be too hard we'll make him he's a cat and he's furry so we want to make him feel that way I mentioned to you on one of the videos that um, I've all, for years I've used um, gray palette paper. I don't know what you use if you're an artist. And the reason behind the gray is that it's kind of a mid-value to mix color. And I took a workshop with Sarah Sedwick. I mentioned this before. And she uses white. And she told us to bring white paper. And I questioned why. Um, and her reasoning was really good. If you're mixing white, say you're making a um, white vase and you, you have a highlight on the vase, if you have white palette paper, which I, what I did was put a little piece out here and laid it on my palette, that's as light as you can go. So any white you mix up for that vase has to be darker than your highlight. So I laid it out here just to kind of compare as I mix up my whites. but. Good logic to that, I think. When she would, um, <clears throat> and she did paint some white objects, and when she did, they were surprisingly dark. All right, I'm looking at the kitty. There's areas of this, it's, this is a little darker. We gotta push that back. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's actually his belly behind that leg. I want to think about that. All right, let's, um, I want to keep going on the kitty till I get him where I want him, or pretty much where I want him. So, there's little toes on the feet, and they are not light enough, so let's, uh, be picking around with detail probably at this point anyway. I mean, generally I like to block in the canvas and go from there. 
All right, we're going to put some of this white on, but I don't want pure white, obviously, so we'll put a little color in it. saying it's push and pull. You make something bigger, then you cut into it, and back and forth till you, you get what you want. Kind of a shame his eyes aren't open, maybe. But, you know, they're so small, I don't know what you would see. little pink toes. We'll suggest those later on. We'll just kind of get these feet blocked in, I think, for now. Got to pick up the pace a little bit here, don't we, or we won't get this done in one video. Again, that belly back there, I want it to be a little darker so it pulls back behind that leg. up to his tail. Now the ears don't really look pink inside, but I think I'd like them to be. we can get that without getting too much black in there. This is probably too pink. Shoulder ought to be up a little higher, I think.
nice thing about tone in your canvas is, you know, it's not white there if there's a little place that isn't covered. All right, let's move forward here. I think what we'll do, I'm debating here. You know, I could block this bottom in a kind of the grout color of the brick and then paint the brick on top of it. I'm not sure at this point. Let's block the windows in because they're kind of a dark value. I can kind of see some things in there, but and I might suggest some stuff, but it's going to have to stay fairly dark. And I like my darks to be transparent. Put a little water in this so it'll move a little better. Okay, and this goes up. Looking where it hits his head, about right there. And this white goes kind of up through his ear right there. the cat to stand out so it might even be that we have to lighten up the window we'll, we shall see you know he's my focal point and you start off with a plan and you know you have to do what you have to do to make it work so Kind of looking at what's in the window, the darks, and and then out here. This is exciting, right? Can you see the top of that even? Let's well, I'm sorry. Inside there's like a countertop that runs across here. I'm sorry. I had that cut off all this time, didn't I? trying to paint what I see inside the window there, some of the colors. No 
idea what I'm looking at there. Not that it matters. How are we doing on time? 40 minutes. Some kind of reflection running down through there. Maybe it's a ghost. Ought to be some ghosts there if there's ghosts any place. I don't know how many Shaker villages exist anymore, but um, it's a fun, for us, a fun day trip. Beautiful buildings. The Shakers were amazing people. Their downfall was the fact that they kept their men, women and men separate. That doesn't work. So there are no more shakers. This part's not very exciting, is it? It's a usual painting looking inside a window. I mean, I paint a lot of windows from the outside, but usually you're not really looking at what's inside them. Generally, there's um, sky reflection, and you tend to do them blue. Which, you know, actually, probably it was a maybe a sunny day. We'd have some of that going on. And you never know, before I'm done, they might look that way. For now, though, I'm just going along with pretty much trying to just block in kind of what I see there, and we'll see how it reads. Sometimes I kind of do this kind of thing, you know, to make that like reflection the glass too. I used to watch quite a few people paint online. It was fun. Uh, don't seem to be as many people doing it now. Not live, especially. There is one gentleman I watch live frequently, Dan Nelson. He uh, paints out on the street a lot of times. He does wedding receptions. He paints. He's the entertainment. That's brave. But you can find him on YouTube if you're interested. Um, He's a busy, hard-working artist. He, it's what he does to make a living. <sighs> It'd be a tough full-time job, wouldn't it? You know, to be supporting your family with. Aren't many artists make a living at it. You have to teach. Saturday, I went up to see a friend of mine, fantastic artist, you may have heard of him, Chuck Marshall. Um, been a friend for years. I've taken lessons and workshops with him, but he lives uh, north of here right now, and he uh, had a studio sale 
and I went up no way planning to buy another painting just kind of going to visit and and uh, I did buy an easel from him I bought a uh, easy L push odd box because I kind of wanted one of those I have a French easel a half French easel actually it's lighter than a full French easel that I paint with outside um, and I did buy a painting <gasps> I love the painting I bought um, he does a lot of plein air competitions. He's pretty well known. He's in plein air magazine, and uh, you, like I say, you may have heard of him, Chuck Marshall. Um, but the painting I bought, he painted up in New York on a, in a competition, and it's a farm scene, which they just tug at my heartstrings. I I, I love to paint barns and. And this one, the perspective on it is just wonderful. You're like standing on a hill top, looking down at this whole farm, barns and buildings. And it's one of those, you know, as soon as I picked it up, I thought, I love this. So I now have another painting. <laughs> I think I counted one day. I probably have works of at least 25 other artists. You know, artists are collectors too, which is great you know we should be support other artists all right let's see I got away from my kitty here didn't I that crazy window let's put a little nose in here he's got black under his nose I'm gonna block in that white window, but I don't want it. I don't want it too white. I don't want it to fight with the white on the cat. So we'll gray it down. kind of mixing this into my mixture that uh, the cat came out of. Today I painted with my group. I have a group that I, I'm the chairperson for, and we meet every Monday. It's a group of, uh, well, there were 20, now there's 19, but I have a list of about 15 people. I haven't let anybody in lately. Um, wonderful group. We're so lucky to have each other, and we meet every Monday, 10 to 2, and most generally we kind of do our own thing. Sometimes uh, I set up a still life. Um, occasionally we get a model, but in most cases people are kind of doing their own thing. Um, once a month we do critique. We had critique today. And when we do critique, we've been doing something new this year. Um, we go through the alphabet, take turns, and we present a new artist, a new living artist, when it's your turn. There are so many amazing living artists that you, you know, aren't aware of. I continually, I say that, I continually find new amazing artists, like on Facebook. So that's been an interesting addition since we've been doing that. But like I say, if you have the opportunity to paint with a group, I recommend it. Um, the group I paint with on Tuesday, I chose to just be a summer member with them. So I just, I paint outside with them in the summer 
and I go on, uh, we'll be going on a trip in October. We pick a different location each October and we go plein air paint and it's a ball. You just paint, paint, paint. You do a painting and start another painting. It's just so much fun. We meet at night and we do critiques and we go out to dinner and um, the first year I went it was really warm for October and it was a full moon. So several of us went out in the street and painted in the city. Um, I don't know if you've ever painted in the dark before. I've done it a few times. Um, it was fun. I say I'm kind of up for anything. I've always been willing to try anything. All right, this ear is a little large. a little fine-tuning. What do those crazy windows look like to you? Kind of crazy, right? All right. And the windowsill, think about that, his little paw just kind of rests over the edge. A little darker with that because I'm going to want his paw to stand out. That's got to run across. If it goes right there, it's right here. And it's actually a very straight line. So I've got to adjust over here. That's a little off. If that line's here, then it's down here. Okay. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. said it before but I think the reason I'm doing is just to kind of get back I uh, people have been generous with me over the years and and very helpful and you know again that's how we learn we learn from each other we learn from doing too I mean you know but uh, we shared that's the nice thing about a group you know uh, we share opportunities and we share tips and pointers and products that we run across and um, I bought a new thing last week yeah I'll show you maybe at the end somebody brought it out when we were painting and it's like oh, that's a new toy I don't have that one so <laughs> came home and ordered it uh, Back to the kitty. I mean, back to the window here. Get the side tracked easy, don't I? Filling in 
some of these areas. You know, I have no idea how this window really looks at this point. We may need to simplify it a lot. And that kind of makes that, mm, I'm not sure how I feel about that blue line. It kind of makes it feel like uh, part of the window, doesn't it? It runs even over into there. All right, let's think about some brick. I'm going to take my transparent red oxide and some CAD red light, maybe a little yellow even. I think a little white. Let's see what that looks like. I think what we'll do is just kind of paint them in and leave the grout lines. I want it to be painterly. I don't want it to be perfect. And besides, this is very old brick and it is sure not perfect. It's funny, this is a little piece and this is a bigger brick. Yeah, they're not uniform at all. They probably made a lot of repairs over the years. So we don't care if it's uniform either. At this side, I am just seeing straight bricks running across. Maybe that's better, maybe it's less distracting. Kind of nice having the orange on the background. I'm not fighting the background, huh? It's been an hour. line up my grout line, so we'll bring that over. All right, didn't quite make enough. And do the same thing again. Transparent red, a little red, a little yellow, a little white. mortar. Kind of a dirty yellow, I don't know. Let's take some Indian yellow and some white. Take a little bit of that gray mixture and throw that in. Let's see what that looks like. striving for perfection. 
I want it to be painterly and I want the things that are important to stand out, you know, the cat, the cat is what I'm worried about most. And the brick obviously explains that we're outside. shadow under that you know and you could spend a lot of time picking around on this brick and I don't know and you know and I can later on like there's some shadow here where the big fat mortar comes over it so maybe later there's a limit to what I want to do tonight um, soften some of this. His little face is actually laying on that ledge, so I'm bringing that up a little bit. Let me think about that. That would require then if I do that, then his belly's gonna have to come up. Nope, I think we're gonna bring the head down. Mix up some of our dark, dark, dark color here. Yeah, because if this is where his belly is, which see that feels about right. Then the windowsill's got to come over in here. Okay. So his head's got to come down here. Just adjust, right? doing directional swipes to kind of suggest, you know, the wood running that way.
read one time that if there's a favorite part to the painting, you know, whatever drew you in to paint it, like that you should leave it to last. Um, for me, the favorite part of this would be the little details on the cat. kind of busy we'll have to decide and maybe you know with the brick and the windows and I might have to simplify the windows you know it might just be too much kind of suggesting some obviously diagonal strokes All right, let's look at Kitty again. I'm actually going to get a little brush out, a little guy. Take a look at him. Just some toes. You can see any eyes in there at all. He is sound asleep, isn't he? One thing I do kind of like is the roundness underneath his face here. Let's get that. It's not a commission, so I don't feel like you have to nail him exactly like I would if it was a commission. Little pink toes. that's not too much. That's a little dark.
try something here. thing about oil is you can stretch, get back to the white canvas. It's a pointy stick, but you can use a stylus. All right, let's look at him, see what we're thinking here. to see there's a lot of glare for me there's probably glare for you too Looking at the shapes of things, the shape of the darks. Okay, I've got to bring that up a little bit. That uh, and I see, I see some things. That shape is wrong on his head. It curves around and up into his ear. to feel like a tail, so we'll round that off a little bit. Bring some fuzzy hair up. Cut into that a little bit. We're going to get a little white, mostly white, maybe a little yellow in it. Want to be fairly thick.
dirtied that up. I do want it to pull back behind that leg though. And it's a little confusing, isn't it? But we don't have to understand everything, do we? some blue reflections in here because I think that might make it feel more like we're getting some uh, sky. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I think that makes it feel like another mullion, is that the word? I'm not sure how I feel about that. And sometimes if I'm having trouble getting things absolutely vertical, I'll get out my T-square and use that puppy. I want that to feel like that's all one window pane. like a tail. And we may muss this brick up a little bit, you know, so it's not so perfect and it looks old. Alright, what do we think? Are we getting there? had to really feel like it's laying down and I struggle with that a little bit. See 
that really. I may have to bring his back up a little bit to make that work. I think that's better. That's his leg hanging down. Alrighty, maybe we'll call quits here. Let me get up here and I'll show you what I've done. the whole painting. You zoom in on him. If, see how pale he is? And I highlighted the top of his back and stuff so that would stand out. And you still see a few things maybe. I scratched in the whiskers. Here's the image. So I was going to show you my new tool. Follow me over here. How about this? Easy L makes this. Maybe you all have one I did not, and I needed one by Easy L. You can use it inside or out, figure out your composition. It comes with a little marker. And the nice thing about it, it's like dry erase. You can draw on it and then wipe it off. So, again, that's a toy I didn't have. So. Now I do. All right. Well, this went on a while. Um, we'll see. I may tweak him a bit. My bright, my brick is brighter than that. Don't know if it matters, but uh, all right. Thanks for joining me. Have a nice night.